Good morning, Wednesday. Bible study, which should be every day of the week, in my personal opinion. God bless your heart and all your parts. Mm. Well, I was sitting here and I turned on YouTube and there was a commercial, a GE commercial, where you could talk to the stove and tell the stove what temperature you want to put your food on. By all means, I'm not bragging about that. It would be lovely for me because I don't really cook. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me, but you will hear it from my children. I do a little dab now. I know how to cook, but it's not my forte. But anyway, just immediately when I seen her, it's a mother walking around the kitchen. The kids are on the floor, and she uh, one baby's throwing a cup on the floor. So she's bending down, she's picking the cup up, and then she don't have hands to go to the stove. So she tells the oven, uh, put the oven on uh, 345, you know. And immediately it came to me, and I thought about it. I said, that's what's wrong with society right now. We use a lot of technology. We don't want to use our hands. We don't want to use our feet. You know, our cars automatically park now. Uh, we don't want to do anything with our bodies, and we don't want to use our hearts. We don't want to use our hearts to care about people. The news media and the police are talking about the blood being shed and the violence that's happening here in Louisville. But what it is, too, is that we're not using our hearts. We're on our computers. We're on our phones. Our phones do everything that we want them to do. But it can't love for us. It can't care about another person. Only our hearts can. When we love Jesus, when we know about God, when we ask him to come into our hearts, when he comes into our hearts, he comes into our hearts and our minds to stir up our emotions, to be concerned about one another. And therein lies when he's talking about love that neighbor. When he says love that neighbor, what I get out of the Bible is that what he was talking about is loving the person that was difficult for you to love. The people that were different than you. It wasn't so much a person abusing you. I, I, you know, maybe that's deep in there, but beg my pardon. I don't recall in the Bible when John the Baptist and Elijah was being ran. When, when Elijah ran in the woods, when Jezebel told him that she was going to kill him after he killed all of the prophets and stuff, when he was running and he ran and hid and the birds and stuff fed him, I don't recall him sitting there talking about, oh Lord, forgive them for what they do. He was sitting there talking about, oh God, I wish I would die. He just killed like fat, it was six, seven hundred prophets. But then he turns around and he became weak because people don't know it takes a whole lot of strength. It absorbs you when you take and you putting in to doing God's will. And then all that strength is gone when somebody comes against you like that, which he thought was so powerful, even though he knew God was powerful than her for that little brief moment. <laughs> Once they said it, that fur came up on him. There was no shortcut about it. He was in fear and he ran. And when he ran, he was like, whoa, Lord, the Lord wasn't talking to him at the time when he was running. People get that twisted that God's in your ear 24-7. God's not always in your ear 24-7. If he was, we would never do no wrong. And that means all of us because I'm not above sin. I'm not above doing wrong. I'm not perfect. I don't want to be perfect. I don't want to do sin and do wrong, but I don't want to be perfect. Perfect people that I know are dead. My mama always say that. <laughs> Ain't nobody perfect but Jesus. <laughs> But yes, like I said, we don't want to use our hearts. If we use our hearts, mostly if we go to God and, and we ask God to come into our lives, God save me, God use me, God wash me, cleanse me. Once he does that, you'll start feeling for a person. I'm not talking about snitching. I'm talking about caring about somebody. Hey, neighbor, 
people laying in houses and in apartments dead for two or three days and nobody's been there to check on them. People have to send out for welfare checks and stuff. I'm talking about being concerned about a person. When a person's calling out for help, being there for a person. I'm not stupid. Believe me, don't get it. Mm -mm. I'm not stupid. I'm in the streets. You know, I'm not always on the street in the corner like that. But I know when other people do wrong. I know people do things to people that people retaliate. You know, I'm not naive to think that you, people just running up and shooting people. Ooh, let's go shoot somebody. No. And while I'm on that subject, I was going to separate this video. But I was walking yesterday down the street. And this, it's, it, this converses together. I went, um, I'm walking again. Hello. But it's all good because it's a lesson in it. As I was walking down the street, I walked from 28th and Broadway in Louisville, Kentucky. I walked from 28th and Broadway to uh, 28th and Virginia. And uh, I was looking for the bus. And the bus didn't come, so I ended up walking over to my daughter's house. But as I was walking through the neighborhood from 28th, a couple of people were walking. Two guys was walking in my direction. And as I was walking, a lady approached me and a little boy, African-American lady and an African-American little boy. And they spoke to me. And I was astonished because where I live, don't know about speak. I'm in a weird neighborhood where I live. And uh, you don't get it often. I don't get it, period. Don't nobody really speak to me over here. And it's not just me. It's just a little attitude thing they got going on. I don't mind. You know, uh, but with that being said, I'm not worrying about it. But it was beautiful to hear somebody speak. And to be honest with you, when I first was down there, because I had to go down there, you know, I'm going to put my business out there. I went to cash my paycheck and uh, at the Kroger's. And when I did, it, that furred me. Oh, do I want to go in there? Oh, well, do I really want to go cash my check in there? Uh, you know, somebody might try to rob me. Somebody might jump out. The media can be used for good and it can be used for evil. It plants seeds in your mind and if you accept some of that what they're saying, it will plant a seed in your mind and you'll start believing it. And the what I'm trying to say is all that distance that I walked, I, I walked from Shabley, I walked there. When I was walking through the West End, I did see that we need to take and invest in our neighborhood ourselves, start cutting some of that grass. I got a different mission, but I wish someone would pick that mission up, cut some of them fields and stuff, the grass and stuff is going around vacant buildings and stuff. That would be beautiful. I would love to see that. If I had the time, I would love to do it. Some of my numerously, you know, I, I outrageously high. But I would like to see someone take that mission on. But like I said, walking through there, it brought back so many memories. Because I used to move all the time. I lived at 25th and Oak. <laughs> Hello, I lived at 24th and Jefferson, me and my baby girl. I mean, my baby girl lived at 25th and Oak. Mm, mm-hmm, yes. Yeah, been around, so it was wonderful. The point I'm making, it was nice to walk through the neighborhood. It was nice. It was beautiful to be on a sidewalk. You know, I love it. And the point I'm making is, it's not dangerous. It's not dangerous. You don't worry about where you're walking and where you're going if you're not doing nothing to nobody, if you're not bothering anybody, you know. You know how to put your money away, tuck your money in your pocket or whatever. Nobody's running up to you. Ooh, I'm going to rob you. Ooh, you in the West End. I'm going to kill you. Ooh, it's shooting. It was beautiful and it was peaceful. It was nice to see elderly people sitting on the porch and talking to one another. That's how it was when I was a child. My mother would get up in the morning, 6 or 7 in the morning. She's sweeping, people going to work or whatever. My mother's up in the morning. She's, she has already fried her chicken and cleaned her house. Mopped and swept the house. Either got us ready for school. I else she's out in the yard. She's cleaning up and she's conversing with all of our neighbors. They all talking to one another. They speaking. And it took me back. And I love it. I love it. I love the West End. It's a beautiful place. I, I To be honest with you, I live in Shavley, but I go and associate. I do a lot of the things. Like I go to the Kroger's over in Portland because I'm familiar with the area. I associate in the East End. I walk often in the East End. I used to live in Liberty Green. Uh, this video is going long, but anyway, I'm just saying that I don't care where you go. And on my webpage, Vigilantes for Jesus, 
slash website, you will see that I talk about demographics. And demographics is people talking about where areas, certain zip codes are bad. You know, when you put that stigma on kids and make kids think I live in a poor neighborhood, therefore I'm poor. You shouldn't place it on people's mind. This is a bad neighborhood. That's a good neighborhood. Because eventually the people that's in the bad neighborhood might choose to start going to the good neighborhoods. And I'm not just talking about to live. So we need to address those issues. It's separation. That's what God doesn't like. All that separation. You black, you white, you, you Mexican, you Puerto Rican, you, you this, you alien. Stop separating. Let's talk about unity. God wants unity. He wants us to, come, us to come together. That's why he said go out into the world and preach. Be my disciples. You know, he didn't go out there and say, look, you're a Christian, you're a Protestant, you're a Methodist, you know, you, you, uh, you, you are a Buddhist, you, you're an atheist. He didn't put all that out there. He said, there's one God. There's one God, and I am that one God. When you split the atom open, I am God. When you go to the end of time, when you send up all of the spaceships, when the planes go up, when you send all everything up in the air, when the bullets go up in the air, I'm behind it. I'm behind it. I'm beyond it. You know, mm, I am eternity. God is eternity. You can't touch that. He's eternity. He is the atheist. I'm in a post of where this dude Degrassi, you know, I studied him in class when I was taking astrology. Yeah, he even admits it. He's an atheist, but when he gets through breaking down all of his little math equations and he's talking all his talk about nature and science and the atom and all of that, he says, after that, he said, I can't explain it. He said, now we can explain a whole lot of things. He said, but I can't explain that. He said, because it's, it's infinite. He said, well, we don't know what's beyond that because who created that? God. <laughs> God. All day long. All day long. And then once you, mm, let me stop. But like I said, there is a God and we don't need to keep using a whole lot of technology, a whole lot of equipment and not using our hands and not using our hearts. We need to start using our hearts and be concerned about one another and stop the violence. Yeah, not just talk about it, but be about it. Stop the violence. Hey, dude, stop talking crazy to the dude over there before he come back and do something to you. Hey, lady, stop talking crazy to that lady before she come back and do something to you or you do something to her, then you sitting in jail. You know, if you have some disputes, some disputes you can take to the police department. You know, stop taking on a lot of things yourself that you don't have to and just sitting up in the jail talking about, what happened? <laughs> what happened? Did I do that? Did I do that? A Steve Urkel moment. So... But God, just call on him and go to him and take it there. But don't take it to the street. So God bless you. This is the longest video I have made. So God bless you. God keep you. And uh, I enjoyed my journey yesterday. And I'm getting ready to go on a journey today. But to God be the glory. You know, to God be the glory. I thank God for my legs. Perfect example. What technology can walk for me? There's a technology that can talk for me, but there's no technology that can feel for me. Can't nobody feel for me. Can't no, there's nothing that can make me love God. Mm. Yeah, I can hate him. I can choose to hate him, but there's nothing that, there's no machine that can make me hate him. I can choose to hate him and not believe in him. But my ultimate choice, the, the, a choice of loving something that you cannot see. Mm. with the physical eye to care about and to believe and to trust in something that you cannot see. It's easy to hate something that you don't see. Let's go deep with that. It's easy to hate something that you don't see, but how powerful is it to take and to love? God that you can't see. Because I was getting ready to say, oh God, but now it's not no oh God. This God, he's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. Mm. He's all that and then some. Because I know him for myself. Because when I had some scrapes, when I was in the world, he came to my aid many times. When I was drinking and driving and running the streets, thinking I was big and bad and doing anything I wanted to do. Mm. Yeah. 
Yeah. God. I know it was him. Don't go down that street, Janice. <laughs> Don't keep talking crazy to that dude, Janice. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Yes. Mmm. I could feel him in my spirit. I could feel him in my soul. I could feel him in my head. I could feel him in my hand. I could feel him all over me. Ooh, something that I can't explain, but I know that he is. Mm. So like I said, God bless you, God keep you. I'm at 1537 on here and never been this far. So you know the spirit's moving. So God's good all the time. Let's use our hearts. Let's care about somebody. Let's care about our neighbors. The next door neighbor, the neighbor down the street. Let's care about people, black, white, green, alien, whatever. Let's care about each other. Let's care about each other. You know, let's care about the police. Let's care about the judges. Those are the people we need to pray for. They have our destiny sometimes in their hand. Yeah, there is God, but we live in society too. My mama raised me and told me and my brother, said, hmm, <laughs> you might not want to always answer to me, but you will answer to somebody. That's the way my mother raised me. Yeah, she told us that real quick. <laughs> you gonna answer to somebody. Yeah, so. God bless you. God keep you. You have a wonderful, marvelous, fantastic day.